Get your glasses up. Get your glasses up. A toast to the man. Welcome to a toast to the man with your boy, S.D. Booker. Welcome. Today's topic, always give a man an out. Now, you may say, uh, what does that mean? Always give a man an out. Well, never corner a man if he's waving the white flag. If it's obvious that he doesn't want any smoke. You know, it's obvious he doesn't want to fight. It's obvious he doesn't want to engage. Let up on him. That's his out. You know, that's his out. Uh, even if it's not so obvious. You know, um, ask, ask the man to, uh, you know, let's have a private conversation. Let's get an understanding where I was coming from, where you're coming from. Uh, let's bring clarity to the situation. And I write this in the book, A Toast to the Men, that, you know, those types of conversations need to happen away from the crowd because the crowd is what fuels confrontation in most cases. So step away from the crowd, go to a space, no noise, where you guys can talk and hash it out. You know, I've been on this earth for 44 years and man, maybe once or twice, maybe just once, man, in my lifetime, where, have I, where I have seen men fight, two men fight, and there wasn't a crowd. They were off to themselves fighting. No crowd, no battery in the backs. They were off to themselves. It just doesn't happen that often. Because the truth of the matter is, most men do not want to fight. You know, because we know where it can lead. You know, we'd rather not fight. Uh, we will fight a lot of men, uh, but most men, unless you're just a nutcase, most men do not want to fight. Uh, like I said, because we know where it can go. You know, bones get broken. People end up in the hospital. People can end up in the cemetery. Men know where fighting can lead. And so most men really don't want to fight. But most of the times, there's a crowd or there's a woman that's right there and your pride and your ego is involved and there you go fighting somebody gets hurt or somebody gets killed i'll take you back to a story he may see this shout out to uh reagan shout out to his brother show uh this is about maybe six or seven years ago i was uh at this bar and uh, it was a bar I used to go to, you know, um, frequently, you know, go watch the game, shoot pool, play darts, fellowship with the brothers. And so um, I go to the restroom and I'm using the restroom, right? In the stall, it's empty. But soon after I enter the restroom, two guys walk in. Now, and they're, they're having a conversation. Now, one guy is more heated than the other. I can't hear these guys because there's a stall. There's a wall between us. So I finish doing what I'm doing. I wash my hands. And, and, there's, and this one guy is still going in on this other guy, saying how he'll beat his A double dollar sign how he'll put hands on him, what he'll do to him. And it's just us three in this small bathroom, the small restroom. So I'm like, in my mind, I'm like, man, let me fire up my cigar. I was gonna, I wasn't gonna make a video. And so, I did plan on smoking a cigar, but I was like, man, let me make a video. So. So 
So in my mind, I'm like, man, this one guy really don't want no smoke. He's making it obvious. Man, this guy's apologetic. He's humble. And uh it's obvious, man. He just hey, he just don't want no smoke, man. And the one guy is just he's pressing the issue. Come to find out the guy pressing the issue. His name is Reagan. Now I can't remember the other guy's name. So I leave out the restaurant. And soon after those two guys exit the restroom also. Now, by fate or just rare, rare coincidence, I'm seated at the bar now on the other side of the restroom. Reagan, the one who's really pressing the issue, he sits next to me. I don't even know him at this time. And I tell him, I said, man, you're a bully. He's like, what? I said, yeah, man, you're a bully. I said, that guy, he didn't want no smoke, man. You, you kept pressing it. I said, man, you always got to give a man an out. Now, I came to him respectfully, but I still voiced my concern, my, my opinion. And I didn't even know this man, but it was just me and him, nobody around. Nobody heard what I was saying to him. I wasn't being disrespectful, right? Balanced tone. And I wasn't trying to check him either. It was just coming to him like a man. And he goes on to, to say, but no, nah, man, you don't know what happened in the parking lot. This dude did X, Y, Z. He said X, Y, Z. <clears throat> so I was trying to see what it was really about when we got in the restroom. I said, okay. I said, but man, that guy just, he bowed down, man. He didn't want it. So he's like, all right. So we, we ended the conversation. Now, I didn't know at the time, but I found out later that Reagan is Show's brother. Show is a friend of mine. I used to manage Show. Tried to manage him. He's a comedian. Um, you know, we might end up doing some things in the future. As far as that's concerned, I think we really will. But I didn't know they were brothers. I didn't know Reagan's history. That he was nice with the hands. Um, a hothead. Love to fight. I didn't know that. But I'm just, you know, I'm all right, too. But it, I really wasn't on that, but I'm all right, too. And I'm just saying, man, you know, you're pressing a guy that really didn't want it, man. And so we end the conversation on a good note, you know, no no hostility, no bitterness. And uh, as I'm drinking and I'm looking at the uh, the bathroom door from across the bar, the other gentleman who was getting pressed comes out. Now, he sits at a bar stool right by the bathroom, the restroom. He sits right there. And he immediately makes a phone call, gets on the phone, makes a phone call. That was my cue to leave. Immediately when I saw that, I left, got in my car, I left. Because I was like, man, for this dude to get handled like that, verbally assaulted and threatened like that, and he doesn't leave, he gets on the phone, something is about to happen. All right. So I left. I get a call the next day informing me that, uh, hey, man, uh, Reagan and some guy are fighting by the restroom. <clears throat> so I guess Reagan went back over there and, and they mixed it up, man. And, uh, you know, I don't know who won, who lost. It doesn't even matter. But they ended up mixing it up. And, uh, but I was gone. Uh, about weeks later, show uh, crosses my path. 
And he's like, hey, man, uh, my brother <clears throat> was asking me if I knew you. He was describing you. And he didn't know your name. He was asking if I knew you. And I was like, yeah, man, yeah. He was like, yeah, I know Book. Good dude, this and that. He said, man, this dude gonna tell me to always give a man an out. And uh, show was like, man, when he told me, you told him that. He's like, man, that threw me off. He said, because we wasn't raised that way. He said, but man, with that philosophy you have, man, it can keep you alive. It can keep people alive. He said, man, it made me think. And I was like, man, you know, book is right. We should give a man an out. Now, let me say this. I'm not against uh, defending yourself, putting hands on a man if you have to, or if it comes to it, have to put him down. I'm not against that. But... You know, let's be wise. Let's have discernment. Let's not press the issue if it doesn't have to be pressed. Right? So, you never want to put yourself in, in an unbalanced position. Hey, man, stay balanced. When it comes your way, you, you can handle it. You know, uh, if it's not about that, you can walk away. But stay in a position to be ready to love and ready to fight. That's a balanced uh, position, you know. Uh, shout out to my boy, <clears throat> Immortal Minds. I was looking at one of his videos, and he said his, grand his grandmother told him, son, you have to be willing to give a man your coat without him even asking for it. But you also have to be willing to kill that man if it calls for it. So, wow, that's balance. That, that's balance, man. You're just in a balanced position, man. I'm ready to love. I'm ready to do the total opposite of love if I have to. But, you know, that's, that's just what I live by, man. I, I pull brothers to the side, man. You know, do that and try to speak to them. Hey, and sometimes they'll listen, sometimes they won't, whatever. But always give a man an out. And you only can do that. You only can be in that frame of mind if you're not emotional. You have to have control of your emotions. And you got to be secure. You got to be secure and confident in yourself, right? A lot of times, um, dudes will strike first or get off first while it, without the tension even being that high because they're insecure. They don't know if they can take that man just straight up. And so they'll try to get off real fast and it hasn't even escalated to that point most times. And sometimes it's ego. A lot of times it's ego. Uh, you gotta be secure, even if women are around. Got to be secure. Even if there's a crowd, got to be secure. But I would suggest, and this is most times to the young brothers, but even older brothers, young brothers, hey, get away from the crowd. You and that brother talk. Hash it out. Calm voices. Right? Respe speak respectfully to one another. And I believe nine times out of ten, things can be peacefully resolved. I really believe that. So yeah, I always give a man an out. You see a lot of brothers dying, a lot of young brothers getting killed. You see uh, even older gentlemen getting killed or killing. I'm sure they didn't practice that philosophy. Right? I always give a man an out. Peace.